Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I am Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. Well, today we're going to go back in our time machine and we're going to talk about a very controversial piece of legislation which kicked around in 2018, was passed by the voters through the initiative process and then enacted into law then in 2019. And of course, I'm referring to Initiative 1639. Now, Initiative 1639, an initiative to save countless lives, was a complete overall of Washington gun laws, including new background checks, new safe storage provisions, new restrictions as it related to the purchase of semi-automatic rifles, and a whole new set of restrictions for both out-of-state purchasers and people in that horrible age of purgatory somewhere between 18 and 20. Now, of course, the challenges were fast and furious at the court level on Initiative 1639. And obviously, since we're still talking about the law as effective law today, we know how effective those challenges were. But you see, the problem was is all of those challenges were ruled upon an old rule of law, which has now been soundly rejected. And it's kind of reopened Pandora's box here for a whole slew of new challenges to Initiative 1639. So today we're going to spend a few minutes and talk about how the challenges to Initiative 1639 are getting a do-over. Okay, before we get going down the road, we are going down. Proud to announce that this video is being brought to you by Security Gun Club. That's right, Washington's nicest indoor shooting facility is found right there in Woodenville, Washington. And listen, you know, I'm bragging all the time about the facility. And I'm bragging all the time about the people that got working there because they are fantastic. And yes, I brag all the time about the thing that I think separates security from all the other gun clubs, which is their dedication to education. Because Jackson, the head of training over there, has developed a curriculum that is going to cater to anybody of any skill level with any need. So whether you're brand new to firearms and you just need some general instruction, or you've been around guns your whole life and you need some advanced private lessons, you know what? Security Gun Club has what you need. But what I really want to brag on right now is Security Gun Club has a toy drive going on this month for the Forgotten Children's Fund. So stop on in any day, 11 to 7 p.m., six days a week. They're only closed on Monday. Drop a toy off for the kids for the Forgotten Children's Fund or make a donation. For more information, visit them at securityguncloud.com. Now that is security with an E, not a mess print, securityguncloud.com. Okay, so the case we're talking about today is a case that is kind of rearing its ugly head again, and that is a case called Mitchell v. Adkins. Now, Mitchell v. Adkins was one of the primary and initial challenges to Initiative 1639. And what happened in that is, is that uh, Initiative 1639 and all the legislative schemes that had come from it was challenged on essentially two grounds. One of the grounds was is that this prohibition against 18, 19, and 20-year-olds being able to purchase semi-automatic rifles was in fact in violation of both their Second Amendment rights as well as their Article 1, Section 24 rights as guaranteed under the Washington State Constitution. The second argument was is that the prohibition on out-of-state residents being able to come into the state of Washington and purchase semi-automatic rifles was a violation of the constitutional protections on interstate commerce. Now, we know that Initiative 1639 is good law. We know that all of the things that came from Initiative 1639 still exist in RCW 9.41. So you don't really need a lawyer to explain to you how successful the challenges in Mitchell v. Adkins initially were. However, when we go back and we look at how that court rejected all of the plaintiff's arguments, one of the things was, of course, what rule of law do we apply when analyzing restrictive gun measures? That is, do we apply a strict scrutiny analysis where we look at that activity and determine whether it is or is not protected by the plain language and historical context of the Second Amendment? Or do we then go beyond that and start doing a balancing test between the individual right which is being infringed upon and the need of society to have that infringement occur for the benefit of the whole? Well, hot off the press, December 2nd, the United States Court of Appeals, Ninth Circuit, has vacated, that's right, they have vacated their initial ruling in Mitchell v. Atkins, which of course 
found that all of Washington's restrictions under Initiative 1639 were totally okay, completely constitutional. Why? Well, because they had applied that intermediate scrutiny test, a test that we now know no longer exists. New York Pistol and Rifle Association v. Bruin and Justice Thomas made that very clear. But when we go back and we look at the holdings of Mitchell v. Adkins and what the court said about what the standard of review is, the court previously stated, intermediate scrutiny applies if the law either does not implicate the core Second Amendment right or does not place a severe burden on that right. Where a law carves out exceptions to its regulation of the core Second Amendment right, it may alleviate the impact so as to render any burden insubstantial. Unsurprisingly, intermediate scrutiny is appropriate here. The age provision does not implicate the core Second Amendment right to defend one's home because it does not restrict the ability of 18 to 20 year olds to purchase long guns that are not semi-automatic. The age provision also contains multiple exceptions allowing 18 to 20 year olds to possess semi-automatic rifles in several places and situations, including in their homes for self-defense. So what the Ninth Circuit has done is said, hey, listen, we're going to grant review on that. We're going to vacate the ruling and we are remanding it for further findings. And essentially they are asking the court to redetermine using the correct rule of law as to whether or not these restrictions still have the historical analogs necessary to uphold them. If they do not, then they are unconstitutional. We're not going to get into any balancing test. That balancing test is now dead. So the case, once again, is Mitchell v. Adkins. It's in the Ninth Circuit. It has been GVR'd, which means they have granted review. They have vacated the ruling. They have remanded it to the lower court for further findings. It's a polite way of the higher court telling the lower court, hey, listen, I'm going to give you a chance to fix it so that we don't have to. If you have any more questions, about this case or anything else related to your Second Amendment rights, remember, you can always contact us at WashingtonGunLaw.com or, of course, you can call us directly at 425-765-0487. Now, let's remember, part of being a lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here at Washington Gun Law, is to know what the law is in every situation and how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching. Stay safe.